In tonight's episode, what I want to do is I want to give you a quick tour of a couple of the tools that I use for detecting nuisance tripping. This could also be prevention as well as the... Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right, anyway, let's get into it. Let's roll the beats. I'm being too serious. Good evening fellow Groove Riders, Will from Wheels Electrical Services, also known as the Midfield General. In tonight's episode, what I want to do is I want to give you a little tour of how I find RCD nuisance stripping, how to find faults with RCDs and all that. This is a bit more of a professional video, so if you're DIY Dave and you've come to have a little look, unless, unless you've probably got about two grand, you might as well, uh, it's probably not for you. Right, we'll get into it, but before we do, if you could do us a massive favour, if you could like subscribe and turn the notification bell on it helps somebody out somehow right what it is in the last couple of videos i've done what i've done is i've done a tour of my 1741 i attached the video above and what it is is a lot of people did say on uh, the uh, other videos more on instagram and tiktok is what was the difference between this but it actually has got the ev function which is is different but what we're going to look at now is the ramp and what I tend to do is I usually put that in an RCD socket, sorry, put it in a socket with an RCD, turn it onto ramp, you just press test, and what that does, it measures the current that it trips at the RCD, so usually, you know, if it's 30 milliamps, if it doesn't trip at all, then obviously it comes up with greater than like 30 milliamps, and you know it obviously doesn't operate and all that, and... Um, and then when you get the value of that, which is usually, usually I find on average that most RC, RC, you know, on the dual RCDs or the split load RCDs, you know, uh, they usually trip in about 22 milliamps. And what you can do with this, this is the absolute game changer. I will bleat on about this forever. And this is the mega uh, earth leakage clamp is that what this does is as soon as you get, as soon as you put the cables, as soon as you put the uh, tails or the actual particular circuit, you need, to, you have to have the neutral and the uh, the, the neutral of the live through, through the actual ring for it to measure. And what I usually try to, you know, usually find that does it is around the tails. And what you can do, which I didn't really explain in the videos, because I am aware about, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to show you little tips. I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm not qualified. Either. I'm a qualified test you know i'm a qualified electrician a tester but i'm not qualified to teach and all that but i'm just that's what i, I am aware of that and um, what you can do is with this which is really good is that when you've got the circuit through there like especially if it's on the tails where it's globally you can actually go through each individual overload like mcb and all that and it will reduce and as it goes along so you can actually find it that way and it's it's absolutely priceless you know and Another function that has done, and I've not had the fault since I've had that, and I've actually got two of these now, is what you can actually do is, uh, if it's an appliance, you can actually get an extension lead, but you have to strip the cable, you have to take the earth out of it, and then just put it through, and then you can plug the appliance in there and see if it's that. And if it is an appliance, then what it does is the actual reading there just absolutely bounces up and down, so you notice that. Or if it's if it's a stagnant, you know, thing, then it's uh, the actual. So if it's stagnant, then you actually know it, it's just like the appliances and stuff like that. And what you can find is, which we do find, is like usually on average, like most houses, I've, like obviously no doubt, I'll probably litter a few photos going along. You usually find about like six or seven milliamps, and as you usually do, just click through them, then you can find what appliance it is. But this, as I say, I've done a review of this one, that's really expensive. This is one of my cheaper ones that I've got. This is, this is a dialogue one or De Longhi, however you want to say it. But obviously it's a lot smaller and you can see the size of the jaws. You know, you probably scrape to get the tails in there. It's all right, it works perfectly fine. It's just that what I did find with this one is that it does actually, uh, it, it is actually, um, it bounces around a lot more, you know. The actual result does bounce a lot more, and when I was actually find, trying to find the problem, which I actually bought this for, you know, this is all, it's all right, you know, you know, as I say, you know, you know, you want to spend within your means, but this is okay. This has got a non-contact uh, voltage detector in it as well, I think. A bit weird, isn't it? 
But yeah, they're all right. I think Ethos do them. I think they're about 30 quid. But as I say, if you're starting out and all that and you want to try it, it's all right. It's really good. And that's basically how, how I kind of do that. And that is, you know, like before, obviously, obviously I don't really want to tell you the other ways of doing it, but we all know it's like where obviously if you've got a dual RCD board, because I don't see quite a bit on social media of people struggle, or struggle with like uh, fault finding with RCDs, but obviously you can disconnect some of the RN, you know, like I'm, I'm saying it like that. So obviously if you, you know, if you know what an RN is, then you know what exactly I'm talking about. You'd have to disconnect it from one of the circuits. You've obviously got to be careful because if it's got a load on it, it could be 240 steel on it. So I'd, I'd obviously energize the circuit, put in connectors, make sure you try and draw out the load so you get that out. And then within, within three minutes, you'd find an RCD problem anywhere. At least get the rest of the circuit back up and running. And that is the way I do it. And uh, if anyone else has got any, uh, any tips or anything like that of how to do it, I think it's blinding. I did chat with someone on um, on Twitter, and he was he's got the TSI version of that, and I think he paid two hundred quid for that. I don't know how good it is, you know. It'd be interesting if anyone knows of any cheap or better models. But at the end of the day, I'm a mega fan, and that is it for another episode. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you like it, you know, and all that. And it is freezing. But anyway, if you're gonna be anything to be electric, up there blues, you know. Tuesday night football tonight, so I'll be having it. Midfield general. See you later.